The catabolism of amino acids requires two steps. First, we have transamination, and then we have oxidative deamination. So virtually all amino acids, with the exception of lysine and threonine, undergo transamination. So let's briefly remember what transamination actually involves. So let's suppose we ingest a meal rich in protein, and our body breaks down the protein into individual amino acids. And so now we have a bunch of these alpha amino acids. Now the cells of our body can use some of these alpha amino acids to help form new protein. But the remainder amino acids which are not used have to be excreted by the body because our cells have no way of storing these alpha amino acids in the long term. And so the unused alpha amino acids have to undergo transamination and oxidative deamination to ultimately get rid of these alpha amino acids by the body. So in transamination, we transfer an amino group from the alpha amino acid onto a carrier molecule, typically alpha ketoglutarate. So our cell temporarily uses alpha ketoglutarate from the Krebs cycle, but at the end, we're gonna regenerate that alpha ketoglutarate as we'll, as we'll see in just a moment. And so when we transfer the amino group onto alpha ketoglutarate, we form glutamate, and the carbon skeleton left over is the alpha keto acid. And so that can be used for energy to form ATP molecules. But why the glutamate? Why is it that all the alpha amino acids have to be converted to the single amino acid, and why is it glutamate? And the answer is simple, because our cells have a way of quickly converting glutamate back into alpha ketoglutarate and liberating the nitrogen group in the form of ammonia. So our cells have an enzyme that can catalyze this oxidative deamination step, and this enzyme is known as glutamate dehydrogenase. So the reason we want to always convert these alpha amino acids into glutamate is because we have an enzyme that can quickly convert glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia. So this glutamate dehydrogenase is found throughout the body, but predominantly we find it in the liver and within our kidneys. And this glutamate dehydrogenase is interesting because it can use two enzymes, two coenzymes. It can use NAD and it can use NADP+. So NAD plus is used predominantly if we're going in the forward direction. And NADP plus is used predominantly if we're going in the reverse direction. So under which conditions are we going to favor the forward process? Well, if we ingest a meal that is rich in protein, we're going to break the protein down into a ton of amino acids. And so a ton of these amino acids, which are unused, are going to be converted into glutamate. And so in our cells, we're going to have a ton of glutamate. And we know from basic chemistry, if we have a lot of reactants, that will favor the forward process. And so under such conditions, we're going to go this way. Now, the reverse is true if we have low levels of glutamate within our body. So if we have few amino acids, we're going to have few glutamate molecules. And so this will favor the reverse process, and we're going to go this way. Now, what also affects the activity of glutamate dehydrogenase is the level of energy within our cells. So the amount of available energy in a cell affects the activity of glutamate dehydrogenase. And that's because both ADP and GDP can act as allosteric activators of the enzyme. So if we have low levels of energy within our cell, that means we have few ATP molecules and few GTP molecules and a lot of ADP and GDP. And the ADP and, GTP, uh, and GDP can act as allosteric activators binding onto allosteric sites on the enzyme and increasing the enzyme's activity. And so if we increase the enzyme's activity, that means we're going to increase amino acid breakdown and that means we can form those we can use those amino uh, amino acid byproducts to form more energy molecules in contrast if we have high levels of ATP and GTP in our cell, these can act as allosteric inhibitors, inhibiting the activity of this enzyme and preventing the breakdown of amino acids. 
Now, I want to briefly talk about D isomers and L isomers of amino acids. Remember, the cells of our body only use L isomers of amino acids to incorporate them into proteins. They don't actually use D isomers. Yet, our diet consists of both L isomers and D isomers. So, D isomers are found in um, D isomers are found in places like plants. And so, if we eat a plant-based diet, we're ingesting a bunch of D isomers, and that means our body has to have a way to actually convert the D isomers into L isomers. And so what happens is in our liver, we have an enzyme known as D-amino acid oxidase. And this enzyme is an FAD dependent enzyme that can act on D isomers of alpha amino acids, breaking them down into alpha keto acids. And these can either be used to help form an L isomer of the amino acid, or they can be utilized for energy purposes. So our body has a way of acting on both L isomers and D isomers. And the final thing I want to talk about is how our body transports ammonia. So when the cells, when the peripheral cells of our body form ammonia, the ammonia cannot simply be moved into the blood. And that's because ammonia is toxic to the body. And so what must first happen is the ammonia must be transformed into another molecule that is not toxic. Then we can dump it into the blood and then it can travel to the liver where we can transform it into urea. So ammonia produced by the peripheral tissue is toxic in the blood and thus must first be converted before transporting to the liver. And so in the peripheral tissue, we have an enzyme known as glutamine synthetase that can combine ammonia with glutamate to form glutamine. And glutamine is not toxic. We simply release it into the blood and it travels to the liver. And once the glutamine ends up in the liver, we have an enzyme in the liver known as glutaminase that can convert the glutamine back to glutamate and ammonia. And then in the liver, the ammonia can be used to help form urea. Urea is not toxic in the blood, and so urea can simply travel to the kidneys, and the kidneys will excrete the urea out of our body. And so in this way, we can break down and catabolize alpha amino acids that we don't need and excrete it out of the body.